Hi everyone, this is the new M4 Mac Mini, and this is the new M4 MacBook Pro. Now, when I received these units at the start of the week, I found myself having to decide which one of these two to focus on for this video. And you know what? I couldn't resist reaching for the Mac Mini first. So in this video, I'll help you decide if Apple's new Mighty and Mini desktop could really make sense as your next computer. Is this actually the budget-friendly powerhouse we've been waiting for from Apple? Who's it for? How should you set it up? And is the studio display worth it? And well, should you just stick to the MacBook? Spoiler alert, the new M4 Mac Mini is not for everyone, but it's good and wow, it might just be for me. Thanks. So what's new and what's different? Before we talk about why you might buy one of these and who it's for, let's talk about what we've got this year in the new M4 mini setup compared to its now ancient predecessor and all those other Macs out there. Now, this is very much a first look. I will, of course, be back with a longer term review. So get subscribed for that. But here are the headlines. So we have to start with size. This mini is truly living up to its name. Compact, minimalist, and remarkably small. It's five by five inches or 12.7 centimeters centimeters squared, so it's less than half the size of the previous design from back in the day. Now, more than ever, as it's significantly smaller than that previous design, it looks super cool next to the Apple Studio display, more on that later, but I reckon mounting this to a desk or hiding it in a desk shelf is a real benefit for a sleek setup. Now, there is one detail that might cause a bit of controversy. The power button for the iMac is on the bottom. That does seem like a really foolish move. But let's be honest, I don't think I've barely ever turned my MacBook on or off with the power button very often each year. I just leave it in standby and keep it charged. So maybe they've thought it through. <laughs> I also love dropping it onto my little trolley for a kind of mobile computing setup when filming here. And it's really good that it's not full on Apple TV small, so it doesn't get knocked around by the heavy cables. And that leads us to connectivity. So Apple has updated the ports on this model. So we now finally get those added USB-C ports on the front and a headphone jack right here really good to see. The M4 Pro configuration also includes Thunderbolt 5 on it. So this is the M4 and it only has Thunderbolt 4, but Thunderbolt 5 essentially means we get data transfer up to 120 gigabytes per second rather than 40 gigabytes per second, massively faster data transfer, and of course, better compatibility with higher end displays. I just have the M4 model here, so I can't comment on Thunderbolt 5. However, note that there is a small sacrifice in the ports on on the back from the older model of the Mini. But for those who need more ports, you can easily connect that Thunderbolt 5 port to a Thunderbolt 4 or similar dock from people such as CalDigit. I've got a trusty TS4, which I rather like. Now, both models come with that 10 gigabit internet and an HDMI port on the back. We also get built-in Wi-Fi 6E, providing users with up to 2.4 gigabytes per second of throughput. And we get that wireless connectivity wherever you set it up. And with Bluetooth 5.3, you're gonna have all the support you need for input devices. So what about performance upgrades and all these amazing fans that sit around the bottom? Well, the model I have is powered by the M4 chip. There's also an M4 Pro version, and this Mac mini is now faster and more efficient by a long way. Two more CPU cores from M2, and memory-wise, we get a base of 16 gigabytes, but I would be tempted to go up to the 32 gigabyte upgrade to future-proof it. Okay, performance, Apple do seem to focus on comparing to the M1. Maybe the stats are more impressive, but hey, here are a couple of charts that might give you some context across the different areas, and you can see how far this really is ahead now from the M1 and from definitely from that Intel Mac Mini before it. Now, with that in mind, compared to M1, we get up to 1.8 times faster CPU, a 2.2 times faster GPU, and perhaps most significantly in these M4s, a three times faster neural engine than M1. All good news for creative tasks and workflows. Now, it's early days for me using this, but it feels as happy editing 4K video as my M1 Max, and Apple boasts the M4 chip has a more advanced media engine that supports hardware acceleration, lets you work on multiple streams, 
dreams of the highest quality content and even that 4K 120 footage from my iPhone 16 Pro is now managed really easily. And if you jump to the M4 Pro chip, you'll go up to a 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU, and you can go up to 64 gigabytes of physical memory, essentially giving you 2X the bandwidth of the M4 chip. A simple way to frame all of this is like, let's say you wanted to edit multiple streams of 4K or 8K video, or do like 3D serious rendering, then I think the Pro chip is for you. If you don't know why you need it, don't bother, go for the M4, it's still super powerful. But more on those choices a bit later. Now there's a lot to be excited about in terms of speed and multitasking power. And one of those key focuses of the M4 update across the board with Apple is the new neural engine capabilities. Now these Macs are designed to support on-device Apple intelligence features. It's just that a lot of us don't have full access to it yet. Now running on the latest macOS Sequoia, it does support the new Apple intelligence suite in the system. And with tools like Enhanced Siri, writing tools, natural language, search in photos, and more intelligent summaries in apps like Mail and Notes, it's really worthwhile. I also love that there's a new focus mode called Reduce Interruptions, which understands the content of your notifications and then surfaces the selective bits of urgent stuff. Very cool. Remains to see how well it all works. We will have to wait in the UK and Canada, places like that, until December to access some of this and into 2025 for Europe and other countries. Let me know what you think about Apple intelligence in the comments. Now look, that's all pretty impressive, but we still have to understand why you might choose this rather than a MacBook. So why would you buy one and who is it for? Let's talk about what I think are the real reasons to choose this new Mac mini and why some of you still might not want it. Now, the M4 Mac Mini isn't just a cheap alternative, it's designed for a specific type of user who can make the most of its unique feature set. So reasons to choose it. Well, number one has got to be cost effectiveness. If you already own quality peripherals like a monitor, keyboard, a mouse, you work at home a lot. In that case, Mac Mini becomes the cost effective entry route into Apple's new M4 chipset. You get incredible power without the premium you'd pay for a MacBook or an iMac. On that note, it's also a great option for number two, future proofing and flexibility. If you want to start with a high performing desktop and upgrade your peripherals later, this is a fantastic minimal option. Unlike a MacBook, you're not locked into the display and keyboard it comes with. Over time and when your knees change, you can upgrade the monitor or monitors, change out the keyboard and mouse to whatever you choose and so on. Now I know that you can plug in a MacBook, but it's never the same as a permanent setup. So notably, given that the M4 Mini now supports up to three external 6K displays over Thunderbolt or HDMI, it makes it a great choice. Now I think you can probably use the Mac mini with an iPad as a display or even without a display and simply remote into it much like Chris Lawley does for his creative iPad centered setup or like my colleague Colin does with a Mac mini mounted under his desk that he remotes into from a file and media server. Cool. Number three, you already have an adequate laptop that you're using. So maybe you own an older but still useful, say, MacBook Air, and you find that you also like working in an office or studio. Well, with the increased cross-account integration and Apple ecosystem working so well, having more than one computer really isn't an issue with Apple these days to find your files. So maybe a mini is a great new primary device for home or at the office, and then you can just keep running that other laptop that you have rather than a full laptop upgrade. I also love the Mini for how it aligns with some of my personal key principles around productivity and focus, removing distractions, a nice minimal workspace, all of that goes a long way. And I think many of you like me, probably run small businesses or have creative workflows like editing. So you do sit at a desk a lot. And I have to say, this really does make the best minimal, clean, powerful setup that I've had yet. And I've actually been loving carrying just an iPad with me on the go and then coming to work with focus at my desk for deeper work. And the mini is a dream for this. And on that note, check out my recent iPad mini 7 video too, if you want to really go mini across the board. And it's very good to see that the Mac mini is also Apple's first carbon neutral Mac. So we're going in the right direction. Now, all that said, if you want one computer to rule them all and you have a budget for that setup, 
then maybe the MacBook does make more sense. And investing in one of these new M4 MacBook Pros with the ports and connectivity, that new nano texture screen could be your best bet. But hey, you know what you should do? Get subscribed here and come back and I'll show you more about the M4 MacBook in a review very soon. Okay, so it looks great and seems super good value for M4 power, but we still have one big question to ask. If you did join the mini brigade, what specs should you go for? And not to mention, what peripherals are you gonna use with it? Let's make some decisions, including whether that lovely studio display is really worth it. If you are a general user who wants fast desktop performance, the base M4 is just great. I might bump the memory to 32 gigabytes to be safe and aim maybe at the 512 gigabyte SSD, which came with this one, since you can always plug in external drives like this tiny X9 Pro from Crucial, for example. And for creatives and professionals who need that extra power for tasks like, say, video editing, 3D rendering, the M4 Pro adds noticeable speed without blowing your budget. So I jump to that only if you know you need it. So what about displays? Now, Apple's Studio Display pairs beautifully with the Mac Mini and offers that sleek, high-res Apple aesthetic. Honestly, though, it's expensive. But when I got it in the studio, I did love it. Mac screens just do design beautifully and wow, that price tag. Yeah, I might still be convinced. But definitely, if you are on a budget, there are great alternatives from BenQ, Samsung and LG that provide similar resolution and quality for a lot less. BenQ even make a Mac-specific monitor like the MA320U. And I actually have here one of the PD lineups, which I think look really good with Mac. I'll link it in the description below if you wanna see. And those allow some of the same keyboard integrations for brightness and audio if you go for BenQ. Just like that native Apple monitor. Now, peripheral choices. I personally love pairing the Mac Mini with my Keychron Q2 Max mechanical keyboard and the Logitech lift mouse. As you can see at my filming desk, it's rather customized, a tactile setup. However, if you prefer Apple's ecosystem, their Magic Keyboard, Magic Trackpad, and Magic Mouse are solid choices. Plus, they now have USB-C variants, though yes, the mouse still charges on the bottom. But then again, you only need to charge it every couple of months, so Who's counting? So is the M4 Mac Mini worth it for you? And is it really a budget-friendly option? Now, if you're after a budget-friendly desktop that doesn't compromise on power, this little Mac Mini is probably exactly what you're looking for. I think this computer is a great choice and a real step forward in design. And who's it for? Well, this is probably a computer for people like me power users who are also a little budget conscious on their upgrades, creators, editors, people who like to keep their computing at work, not take it on the go and keep the rest of their lives separate. And well, people who just like good design. It's pretty. Let me know which model you would go for in the comments or if you'd go for something different. Now I'll be back with a full review on that note of the M4 MacBook Pro very soon and some other great tech and productivity stuff. But there is one more thing. Unless you know the best apps and accessories to use with any Mac computer, you might always stay stuck at email and Netflix, right? Well, I recommend watching one of these videos next and we'll get you leveling up in no time. It's a terrible phrase, but appropriate. Hit my face to subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button while you're down there and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.